Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here a Ford Transit minibus to look at. Now this has got some DPF issues I know, but we don't know what yet, but let's get inside it and figure it out. Now the first thing I'll say is before I get into this van is that I was working on another vehicle here. <coughs> and this guy's been sat across the road here for well over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. With his engine running. The van, that van has been idling for an hour and a half. So I've, all, I've already just pointed out to him. That is an issue. If you've got if you've got a diesel vehicle and you park up somewhere, if you're a lot of minibus drivers and stuff like this will do this this behaviour is when they get somewhere, they just leave the van running, have it with their AC on or whatever, looking on their phone. When you stop a diesel vehicle, switch your engine off. Don't leave it idling. Okay, I'm inside. We have engine service now message. Engine management light is on. But the customer says there is no loss of power. Not that he knows. So let's get it plugged in and diagnose it. Okay, we're going to use the Launch Euro tablet, or XV431 Euro. This is from Launch UK. We'll run a scan on the van and see what's going on. Okay, we just finished doing the scan. We have a lot of communication issues. PCM, we have a P24A4. 00AF fault code. Now that is the DPF that we're looking at. I don't know if all of this communication issues are going to be causing anything but I don't know if it's something to do with any extra wiring that may be fitted to the to the van here but for the moment I'm going to say we'll ignore this and we're just going to concentrate on the DPF. Go in here, live data, see what we can see. Gonna look for soot. Let me just select all that. There's no differential pressure. This one probably uses the new system, which is the inlet pressure. I'll just check if it has anything about delta pressure. Yeah. Okay, we have a soot percentage of 2,071%, that's weird, isn't it? Never seen one that high before. We've got a, you know, it's a slightly blocked EPF, but it doesn't look that bad. Um, let's hold up the, the pressure, hold up the revs. 3000 rpm yeah now we've got really high pressure of 180 so we should only have sort of 60 pressure there yeah, so that's too high let's let that idle back down again Okay, so just looking under here, this is a Euro 6, so it's got a completely different exhaust system fitted to it. That looks like the DPF right there. Exhaust tip is clean. Okay, now this has got a very rare setup, which has got a 2.2, 155 brake horsepower, heavy duty engine on it, but it's, so it's rear wheel drive. But it's got the new DPF system fitted to it, which is the Euro 6 version. And you see this here? This is a vaporizer plug. So not only has it got AdBlue, it's got a vaporizer system as well, which is normally not the case on a transit. You either have one or the other. Pre-2016, um, you'd have the vaporizer system. After 2016, when you had the two later, you'd have AdBlue and then there's no vaporizer system on it. But obviously this one has both systems added to it so they've obviously done something different for these sort of minibuses um, probably wanted to keep I suppose with the higher power engine but still make it Euro 6 okay surprisingly the vaporizer isn't blocked so we're just testing it here 
Okay, so what we've done is obviously connected to the vaporizer via the fuel line there, but that isn't blocked up, which is surprising. Okay, so back up, vaporizer is not blocked. DPF is only slightly blocked at idle, but at 3000 RPM we have sort of 170, 180 pressure where it should only have sort of between 40 to 60. So we're gonna clean out the DPF. So I think what the main issue here was the van was left idling for too long. This is my, this is what I'm gonna say has happened. I'm gonna say the van was idling too long and while the van was idling, the soot counter has come up above the sort of 100% range where if it goes above, I don't know if it's 100% or 120% on these, but once it goes above that certain percentage, it triggers the fault light and then it will not clear that, that fault will not go away until it's either been reset or a new DPF or cleaned and reset or whatever, but it's basically gone beyond the point of doing its own regen. And there's no damage on the DPF, the vaporizer's working, so I think the only thing I can do here is clean it out, reset everything, and then it should be fine. Okay, you probably know where this goes now, is we get our launch DPF cleaning fluid in the gun, and now we're gonna connect that up here. This is a nice, easy one to do because the sensor is right here. We need to get a different pliers because this one won't fit. Okay, we'll get that down and then you need to be very careful when you're doing this because you don't want to break off the little plastic nipple there. So we'll get that open. Okay, I've got that now connected up. So this, people, a lot of people ask me about this pipe, this hose, where do I get it from? It's got a tapered end on it. Um, I did ask Launch UK to find me one of these, they got this for me and they have got some of these in stock but they don't have them on the website you can call up and basically order them. I think they're about 30 quid or something like that but it's a much better fitment than the old original one. Okay so I've got the van started now. Now the DPF does sit up here so that one underneath that is a catalyst. This is the DPF up here. Alright we're just going to spray this fluid in with the engine on because it does sit very close to the engine. I haven't got the air pipe on so it's a bit noisy. But we'll get all of this fluid in and then we'll get back. Okay, so I've just put that air pipe back on. It's a fair bit quieter with that on. Obviously I'm just holding the trigger now. We're getting this fluid. Push down that hose. Go down there into the DPF down there. Okay, now that's all done. We just let, let the um, any excess damp fluid just come out before we put it back on. Okay back inside what we're gonna do now is just reset this 2071% calculation just so we can get the system working right and the way to do that is to tell it it's got a new particulate filter which is where is it pressure sensor okay we can't find it on that machine so we're going to use this autel and see if we can do do it on this Okay, so back here to where we were looking before, all of these have now reset to zero. So we just hold the revs up, 3000 RPM again. It's creeping up a bit there. We'll get the engine speed up here. forget about that. Let's just go back to the pressures. We have around about 90 at the minute. Let's hold it again at sort of 3000. Ok, 
stay idle we have somewhere between 0 to 1 3000 RPM we have let's just get that steady Eighty, ninety, so far. Okay, so this is where we've evened out at sort of one or two millibars of pressure, 0 0.4 and 3%. We have taken it on a little bit of a test drive there, a uh, mile or two, and um, yeah, that's where we're settled down at. We'll take it on another test drive again, just to confirm that we're staying in that sort of area. And then we're gonna check the fault codes, make sure that they haven't come back is clear okay that's another test drive done we'll read the fault codes again which is all fine just that taking on sort of five to ten miles ish okay that's it we're all finished on this one and see you on the next video